we're going to install the CMP tension arm bushings. Now these are a mono ball, so they'll get rid of all that play of the factory tension arm bush, which uh, from what I've read, really crisps up the steering response and cuts a lot of diving under brakes and things like that because it's a big sloppy rubber one from factory. So uh, look, what we're going to need, uh, I think we're going to need maybe some e-torx, some sockets just to get the bottom off. We're going to use our power ratchet because there's a million little bolts to hold in the under tray but that's just gonna be quick and easy comes with instructions which are a bit handy but uh, this video should make it a lot easier for other people so let's get underneath the car we've got the car jacked up wheels off um we're gonna have to well we we'll probably leave them on our brake cooling ducts you can see our other video that we did on that the porsche brake ducts on the m2 and we'll start removing the under tray so underneath the car We've got here a whole bunch of these little bolts. And then there's a couple, uh, like up at the front here, you see that? There's a couple of the push pin rivets on it's right there. So we've got a little trim tool. We can try to get those out. Just pull those down. We don't want to snap them because we want to reuse them. Just pull that insert, the little insert out, and then the rest should... Well, it should come out when we pull the whole thing off. So then we just loosen them up. There's another one there. Those little metal trim tools to do this. It'd be a lot easier. This plastic one is a bit, there we go. It's a bit soft. So anyway, we'll continue and we'll start taking out some of these screws as well. Now, if you need to know what size it is, no problem, eight millimeters. So we'll just, uh, that's all the screws holding on the under tray. So, uh, yeah, you want a power screwdriver or a ratchet to do that because, uh, <laughs> there's a lot, but, um, from what I've seen, that's probably the most time consuming part of this job. So now let's remove the under tray. It pulls out. Watch your eyes if you're under it, because it's probably got some gravel and stuff in it, or just road grime. Even this one does. Ooh, look, we've collected a cigarette butt. Nice. Now let's have a good look at what we're working with here. So we are wanting to remove this arm. Like I said, we got the one with the M stamps. And like I said, it's the one we got our brake duct cable tied to and this is the bushing we're going to get out of this thing so there's a big bolt that goes into a captive nut and there is the where are we there we go that's the bolt directly above it so we need to get a torx and probably a breaker bar to get things moving and pull that out and then we'll be doing the whoop removing the other end let's have a look where it connects down uh, now where are we? Down here. That's the arm there. Down there. I've got to remove that nut and the bar will come out. So that bolt is interesting because it's got a uh, Torx, which is a uh, T56, which is the size. But if you don't have that, it's got a regular bolt head on it. 18 mil. So you can use either. I think we're gonna use the uh, 18 millimeter because we have the bigger breaker bar to get that moving. So with the breaker bar, and I think this is an aircon condenser by the hard line, but you just gotta be careful. And now this is torqued in pretty high. And I'm sliding on the ground trying to push it. So might have to get a different angle on there. There we go, next one over. She's tight. Wish I had an impact right about now, but I, I, well, I wouldn't be able to get it in there anyway. Okay, we'll try a bit harder. Well, I got it to move. Took a breaker bar with a pipe and a lot of swearing, but I got it to move. And then now we should be able to get it out. Pretty easy now. All right, we'll pull it most of the way out and then we'll take tackle that ball joint. Now, that's a 21 mil nut. If you need to hold it, that's a T40 Torx. 
Um, so this car has only got 11,000 kilometers on it. You can see that rust. So these uh, ball joints obviously aren't the same kind of grade of metal as the rest of it. Disappointing, but hey, that's what we get. Now, hopefully, I can just turn this. And it'll just... I don't have to hold that. Ooh, I'm just going to need a deeper socket than that, I think. There we go. Pull it out a little bit. And we're turning the whole thing. So if you had to impact, I think you can just impact it off. But, you know, I don't have that luxury. So we're going to do it. And we're just going to turn the wheels, I guess. I thought the steering wheel was locked, but maybe not. Okay, keep going. Oh, yeah. There we go. It stopped turning. Let's see if we can get some pressure on this. Now, I don't know. We need to see if that's... Let's try to put a mark in this so we can see if that's spinning as well. If it is, we got to get a wrench and hold it. A definite mark. Nope, good. Okay, don't need to hold it. That's cool. So we can just get this on a on the power socket. but not too bad now I guess we can take the finish taking the bolt out of here now it's going to be super jammed up with that full steering lock we got on so uh, we'll straighten up the steering wheel and then try to get that out okay I don't get lots of crud coming out of this little air condenser or maybe need to take the we need to take the bumper off and clear that out and can't fit I gotta push that air con line the whole thing out of the way that's it it should be out of there it's just kind of jammed in under the tension there of the steering lock let's straighten that okay steering wheel straight yeah, that just took all that tension off. And let's get back on with the tools. Let's see if we can get that further out. Or no, maybe not. Okay, let's go need a regular ratchet. Try to pull it out. It goes by hand, so. There we go. Ooh, she's a long one. Look at that. Okay. So that ends out. That ends. That ends out. Now this arm's got to come out of here. I think we're just going to have to put that. Maybe I put that nut back on. I do have a ball joint spreader. I don't want to really check it on here yet. I'll put this on. Got a little bit of a lip there, so I won't do that. I'll put it on that way. There we go. No, it doesn't want to go. Okay. It's fighting me. Okay, put it on this way. Screw it down a bit so we don't mash up the threads and everything. And try to tap it out of there. What are we going to tap it with? Let's use the handle, the torque wrench, and then we'll get a mallet if we need to. 
and we need a mallet because that's not enough. And I'm hoping that's enough. Kind of a weird angle backwards for me to hit, but. Right, okay, we'll still let a force on this. We might get the jack and jack it up here and see if that takes some pressure off so it comes out. Couple taps with straight on, done. Alrighty. Probably loosen it up first. Probably just should have just kept hitting it with the wood, but direct blows. Well, anyway, don't recommend it. You risk hitting your threads, but it works. Okay, now let's uh, let's get that arm out of there. What? Drop the arm down and it went back in. What the hell? Okay. Right out. Back up it goes. That end. The ball joint went back in. What the hell? Okay, piece of wood again. Oh, no, it's definitely gone through. Okay, now uh, we're gonna get this out of here. I think the end. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I've gone backwards with it and then forwards with it. Arm is out. Yeah, okay, let's, uh, we gotta get this other side done now. And then we gotta press out these old bushings. So we gotta go to uh, our buddy's place and get him to help us out. Now on the other side, instead of fighting all the plastic and going from underneath, I remove the, it's only half a fender trim, and you've taken that many screws out, what's a couple more, uh, and taken out the fender trim. And I was able to, with the wheel at full lock, easily with a pry bar and a pipe, boop, straight out, got that bolt out really easy. So uh, none of the hard angles. So take out your fender liner. And it'll make life a lot easier getting that first bolt out. Now I'm gonna ask you for a favor. It's not a big one, but to justify me doing these car videos to the missus, can you please just like the video? I mean, you don't need to subscribe, that's fine. But if you found it useful, remotely entertaining, just somewhat interesting, just hit the like button and I can justify my existence and my time and money spent on toys to the missus. That's it. Now back to the show. So we're pressing out the bushings at my buddy's shop here and uh, we got the starting off with a 70 and I think the bottom I think is a 74, what is that size? I can't quite read it, it's worn off. Um, just big enough to go to the ring and then we're going to push it down so it's flush. Then this one is going to be a little bit too big so we'll go to the next size down and then continue pushing it through. So up and down we go. You can do this with like the more screw in style. Remove the tools. Oh, and we're sliding off, so we can straighten it up. All right, so we got both the bushings out. Now we're ready to go in. Put a little bit of copper grease in there. And the same way it was with the slight bevel, so there's a slight little indentation there, is the way these are going to go in. So we'll just press them straight in. And then, of course, the other side bolts on. So we got the large cup on the bottom, bushing in, put a cloth over it just so we don't get any marks on that cool finish. And then we're just gonna slowly bring it down. There it goes, you can see it moving. Get it flush. 
That'd be it. Okay. Pressed in. Not too hard if you got the tools. So just with the copper grease, we're just going to make sure there's none getting into the threads there. We, and uh, we don't want it to get loose. That would be a very bad day if all that starts coming apart. But we will be loctiting the uh, screws that go in to hold the other side on. Well, it only takes a few minutes with the right tools. And we'll, you know, loctite those when we go home. But thank you to Coltec, uh, Buddy's Workshop in Burley, Australia. And they got a Eurotech here as well doing some stuff. But, uh, and the CMP engineering guys, they uh, actually lent me the bushing press because, um, yeah, their one here didn't wasn't big enough, but uh, that's now resolved because I just ordered them a bigger set. So I'll get these home, lock tight those screws and get them mounted. All right, back from Coltec, got some Loctite. Let's put a little bead down the side here. Uh, it just says use a little bit. Um, it's probably a bit too much, but anyway, and it doesn't give us torque spence. It just says guten tight. The uh, famous German high torque spec. So we'll get them all in here started. And we'll crank them down with an Allen key. Which size? I don't know. This is just one I had lying around. Came from some furniture or something, no doubt. So let's just go around, get them all just lightly tight. And really put some force on them. We don't want them coming out. I don't think they will with that blue Loctite. Okay, there we go. That arm has the bushing installed. All right, ready to put that in the car now. Okay, here we are, reinstalling time. Now, I found it a lot easier to turn the wheel all the way to the right or to the outside, whichever side you're on. And I got a little bag here that's got some spacers that go with these bushings so uh, they just go in there to fill in the gap so pretty easy to do now we get our bolt ready because that'll go in there to hang it same way there's a lot more room when you do it this way and they said if you take out the inner fender liner um you almost don't really need to take out the under tray so that's definitely a, uh, a little shortcut learned for me there I don't think that under tray needs to come off. Um, maybe a, on competition you do, but yeah, definitely not the OG M2 like we've got. Okay, so if we just get that in kind of position there and try to get this bolt in the hole. All right, so switch hands. Okay, where's the hole for the bolt? There it is. Okay, that is nice and easy, and we'll just get to start doing that hand tight so it's not going to fall out. Radio, that's in. Now, the ball joint end, the uh, little cup the ball joint sits in will probably have a bit of dirt in it, and your ball joint might even have some corrosion on it. We just did some light sandpaper and took that off, and then we need to just turn the steering wheel back a little bit. So we can uh, get it in there. A few turns of the wheel and that lines up nicely. Okay, now that should just wiggle, drop it in. We need to grab it, just give it a wiggle. There we go, drops in. We'll put the nut on and we'll torque that up in a second. But what I think we're gonna do, so, these are a monoball that we just installed. So they don't need to be lifted to ride height. Um, otherwise you'd want to raise the, jet, you know, the hub up to uh, about ride height, kind of halfway through its travel is about there. And then you can 
crank that down and uh, and seal it. But because these are monoball, they're going to be twisting. Uh, they're meant to twist. We don't really need to do that, which is good. So next, we need to uh, we're going to start tightening stuff down a bit harder. So we'll get our 22 mil socket. Let's see if well, I think we're going to have to go with the Allen with the Torx and hold. Let's see if we can get a few turns on this. And hopefully it'll just start tightening right down and then we don't need to use the Torx to hold it anymore. That's what happened on the other side because I went ahead and did the other side first. So with ours, we get to a point where we don't need to hold it anymore, which is good because it just pulls tight and then we'll be able to torque it down in a minute. All right, while that is done, now we're going to just torque this down. Um, from what I've seen, if you reuse your bolts, you want to torque it to 100 to 110 newton meters, depending on who makes the uh, who makes the bushings you're using. If you're using new bolts, you go to 100 and then add 90. So we're just going to reuse our bolts. So we'll be torquing these down to uh, 110. So we'll torque down this ball joint now let's see it's, now it's a lot of torque on this this is like a was 175 newton meters so not impossible but you definitely want a uh, need a long torque wrench for it and i'm going to need a better angle because i can't push it away that far, that hard Really got to push. I'm grabbing onto the sway bar with one hand and pulling with the other. 175 newton meters is a lot. There we go. Whew. Okay, 175 newton meters there. Time to torque up our little purple friend. And that's easy, that's just 110. Definitely take off your wheel liner. This sucks. I'm gonna take off this wheel liner. Got one bolt to torque, and I'm gonna take this whole thing out. Okay, first impressions of these monoball bushings. Straight away, I could feel it um, coming out of my uh, driveway. It actually, I could. It just felt a little bit more, I could feel what the wheels were doing. Coming out of the little bumps, it was pulling the wheel around. Um, it was good, because it was kind of numb. It was just numb before. Definitely, yeah, little inputs. I'll go get the alignment checked, but uh, it should all be the same. Shouldn't have changed the arm length or anything, because there's no uh, caster adjustment on these ones. But uh, yeah, just it feels just so nice and precise. So I'm gonna take it just for, sorry, just take it for a quick drive here now. Um, kind of a little loop around the block but one of the sections has a, a big fast roundabout in it so I'll go through that um, but yeah it just it feels I you know hitting some little cat size on the roads I can feel it more um, I don't know how much is that is placebo how much is it is legit but it really uh, it, it feels a bit crisper I must say and for the amount of rubber when you see that the bushing when it's out um, it's quite a bit so I still have to do there's camber on bushings I've got as well, uh, which are the inside ones. The outsides already have a monoball. But the uh, these thrust iron bushings, yeah, glad uh, glad I did it. It wasn't a hard job. I mean, you saw how long it took. Uh, take off the fender liners. That's the top tip. Go through the fender liners. You don't have to take off a million screws and a tray. Um, I don't know. Competition may be a bit different, but on mine, no, yeah, didn't have to. And, uh, and turn the wheels when you want to torque uh, torque stuff up and, and get torque on it to undo stuff. So great, uh, yeah, highly recommend it. So yeah, thanks CMP guys for uh, you know letting me borrow your K 
kids. Thanks for Coltec for letting me come into your uh, workshop and use your big press. You can do it yourself with one of those screw type press things, which is actually what the CMP guys lent me, but I just use the cups from it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, a quick, easy one you can do yourself. You just get a torque wrench. Was it a eight mil socket so you can take off all the bloody screws and the fender liners and the uh, and the and the bigger socket and a torque wrench so you do the uh, a T40 to hold the, the, the ball thing but that's it easy highly recommend it cool here's the roundabout now and yes just sharpness in the wheel that's great okay cool worth every penny So I just had a nice track day at uh, one of the, my favorite track here in Queensland called Morgan Park. It's a real flowing up and down hills, blind corners, awesome track. It's like a country road that's a racetrack, love it. Um, and this is the first track day since changing the front, uh, the front thrust arm bushings to uh, spherical bearings. Holy cow. That was, it's such a difference. I mean, to be honest, after the last track day, I was really disappointed in the M2, you know, I had camber plates on and rear toe arms and tires, but I was really kind of let, I thought it would just be more, uh, and the feel was pretty bad, and particularly under hard braking, so, you know, there's a lot of weight in that thing, when the nose went down and the bum went up, the toe change, I guess, was just so massive, um, it just darted and felt horrible. This time around, with those bushings in there, not having the front, have the deflection and be able to change toe like it was before, what a difference so um yeah gotta replace them i use the ones from cmp they're an australian company uh young guys here who started it up and you know he's basically an engineer and designed his own parts pretty nice little fitment so you know, see it's on video going in that goes in easy but most of most are pretty decent so i think if there's one thing to change in your car suspension wise uh it would be those even with stock camber i th that will make a massive difference so if you're thinking camber plates or those bushings get the bushings camber plates second and then well the next thing for me to do to stop that weight transfer in the dip is to put some decent coilovers in it with some decent spring rates because well lowering springs aren't really going to cut it and you can't corner balance which you'd like to do with the car but it's what a difference i mean i'm just kind of rambling on it but i was literally it was make or break for me even keeping the car. I was like, well, if I'll do this day. Some of the buddies are doing it. Let's go have some fun. And uh, and if it's if it drives like it did before, I'm not going to, you know, I'll just put it up for sale and we'll move on and we'll go to something else. Um, but yeah, it, the turn in was better. The It, it just was great. Like it, it, it was a noticeable difference. So get some of those bushings.